Hi there, and welcome to another SiteGround webinar. My name is Cal Evans, and today we're going to talk about using the command line on your computer to do cool things with WordPress. Um, WordPress has a great command line tool called WPCLI, and I'm going to teach you how to use SSH to connect to a server and then use WPCLI to do some cool things. Now, before we can start doing cool things, though, we have to get connected. So that's the first step. Now, there are several ways that you can do that. If you're using Windows, the default standard is PuTTY. I personally don't like it, but a lot of people do. So I'm going to show you how to connect with PuTTY. Then there's also built into Windows, starting with Windows 7, I believe, ssh.exe. And you can bring up any command line and just type ssh, and that will help you connect to your server. But it's all on the command line. There's no pretty window to work with, um, like with PuTTY. So you got to know all the right um, commands to use. And then finally, my personal favorite, the Windows subsystem for Linux. Now, I use WSL for, I use WSL for almost everything I do these days. Uh, just before I started recording this, I had six different uh, WSL windows open. That's just where I do my work. A lot of developers do. And it's got built-in SSH commands ready for us to use that are very powerful. Now, if you're on Mac OS, then you have a terminal that is that comes with Mac OS called Terminal or Term, and you can find it in your application's utilities directory. It's not great. I suggest if you're going to be doing this for any amount of time that you go out and download iTerm2. It's open source. It is by far a much better user experience than um, just the regular Mac OS terminal. And then, of course, if you're using Linux already, you know how to do this stuff. Why are you watching this webinar? You're in the wrong place. Go watch something else. <laughs> so, now, we've got several things that we've got to um, understand. The first thing is that you have to understand the concept of keys. Keys are what we use to connect to servers and authenticate, okay? And there's two types of keys. First, there's the public keys. These are the ones that we share. These we put on other servers and they help us authenticate. Um, it's okay for anybody to be able to see and use or see, see your public key. They won't be able to use it for much, but they can see your public key. That's not a problem. Then there's your private key. Now, your private key should be kept just with you. Keep a copy on your machine. Maybe keep a copy on a USB stick for backup purposes, but don't ever share it. And most importantly, don't ever lose your private key because if somebody knows your private or has your private key and knows the password to it, then they can access any of the servers that you have in, um, used to, uh, this key to authenticate with. Now, a word about passwords. Key, private keys can have passwords. I generally don't put passwords on private keys. Now, since I'm going to be using SiteGround's tools to show you how to create this key set, then you're gonna, I'm going to show you how to put a password on it because they require it. But generally speaking, my keys all don't have passwords because if I keep my key safe, that's, that's good enough. Nobody can use my key if they don't have my private key. So... That's, uh, you'll see me um, set up a um, password, but that's just because site, SiteGround's tools require it. <clears throat> then with PuTTY, PuTTY's a little bit goofy, we have to encrypt or encode the keys in a format that PuTTY likes. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So I'm going to take you from beginning to end, setting up a key on your personal server. So let's talk a little bit about PuTTY. As I said, PuTTY is the de facto standard for Windows, okay? Um, I did a poll recently, wholly unscientific poll on Twitter. I asked all my non-developer friends what they used, and 70% say they use PuTTY. So if they're using it, then obviously it's um, something that is um, widely in use. It, it's a bit difficult to use for somebody like me because it has a window that I have to get involved in and I'm used to just being able to type things on the command line. But if you like having a nice little um, graphical user interface for things, PuTTY is a good solid tool. Now, where do you get PuTTY? Well, you download PuTTY from the Microsoft Store and it is free. So you can, if you wanna pause this and go download it, 
All you have to do is search the um, store and type in PuTTY and you can download it. Now, if you're using Mac OS, um, then you don't have to worry about this portion of it, okay? Um, you can help, the, this will help you understand keys and everything, but you don't have to worry about the PuTTY specific things on this. <clears throat> now, this is what PuTTY's interface looks like, okay? And this is just a pretty interface to help you figure out where to put all the options. And once you get everything um, set and you save it by clicking that save button, okay, then you can bring PuTTY up pick one of these sessions, type, click load, and then click open, and it'll automatically do it. So it's one of those, you set it once, you never have to worry about it again, which is one of the nice things about um, PuTTY. As you can see, I've already set up a SiteGround demo, but I'm gonna show you all the pieces of that just so that you understand um, what, you know, wh what goes where. So let's start from the um, beginning. The first thing we need to do is go into SiteGround and we go into, uh, if you go to log into SiteGround and you pick one of your websites, um, I picked, this is one of my test websites. If you pick that, then you'll see down here in devs, there's SS key, SSH keys manager. Apparently SiteGround thinks that only developers are the ones that use keys, but that's not really true. A lot of people do. Now, as you can see, I've already got one key in here. This is my key, I imported it, but let's create one so I can walk you through the process with PuTTY. So we're gonna put this here and we're gonna type PuTTY. That's gonna be my PuTTY key. And I've gotta give it a password. Y'all don't look. I love that joke. Um, so I put in a password and it says it's good enough. And so I say create. Okay, it created me, what it did right there was it created me a public key and a private key, and it went ahead and put the public key where it needs to be for the server. But I need the private key because that has to go on my machine. So what I do is I go over here to actions and I say, grab my private key. I'm gonna grab that and close it. And I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to say new key, and I'm going to save it. Now, where do you put these things? Well, the default standard for um, all Unix systems is that every user has a .ssh directory in their um, home directory. Uh, for Windows, there's no default, but I stick with that um, standard. So in the Cal Evans directory, I have created a .ssh, and I'm going to um, name this putty.ppk. Now, normally speaking, these files won't have um, these files won't have extensions, or the public key will be .pub, and the private key won't have an extension at all. But putty requires a special extension, so let's go ahead and put putty.ppk. For those of you thinking, hey, I can see his private key, so I can use that. Yeah, you probably could if I hadn't already erased it by now, but um, chances are real good that as soon as I finish recording this, I'm just going to delete this key. And once I delete the key, it's not usable by anybody. So I've got my PuTTY private key. Now, the first thing I need to do is I need to convert this to a file that PuTTY can understand. So we type, we load the program PuTTY Gen. And that gives us this nice little interface. Again, PuTTY is a graphical interface for a lot of stuff that I normally do from the command line. And we hit load, and since it knows my directory, it says looking for the PPKs. Oh, I found putty.ppk. Now, it's asking me for the password that I typed in. Let's make that. Okay. There we go. Now it has imported that. Now we want to save the private key and I want to save it right back on, on top of that because this is all this is going to be. Now watch this area over here because this is about to change. Overwrite, yes. Notice the format changed. Putty has its own specific format that it wants to see private keys in. That's why we um, go through all of this. Once I've got this saved, I can close that. I can close that. 
And now I can connect to that server using that key. And we're going to do that with putty. So we type putty. Okay, now, sorry I can't make this any bigger. Um, remember I told you I had a SiteGround demo, so I'm going to click on that and load it, but I'm going to walk you through everything that's there. Um, over here on the SSH credentials, SiteGround gives me my username, my, or my host name, my username, and my port. We're going to need those three pieces of information. First thing here is the host name. Okay, we got to put that in, and I, as you see, mine matches. And then port, we need to put that in. And then we need to go down to SSH and Auth and say, I want to use this specific key. Now, I want to use my putty key, okay? And then, before we do anything, let's go back up here to Session. Let's click on Site Ground Demo, and let's click on Save. Now, we've got everything set up, so we should be able to um, log straight in. Let's try this. Oh, now notice, it's asking me for my um, password. Bingo! We are now logged in to my little server. And I can tell because I can go to www. And look at that, um, cale17.sghost.com. Actually, if I go into that, you can see I've got a public HTML. And if you go into that, you begin to see the files that if you've ever looked at the file manager in uh, WordPress, you begin to see files that you're familiar with, things like um, wp-config. Dot PHP. And you can actually, if we wanted to, we can actually modify some of those files. We don't want to. So, and then when I close that by typing exit, it goes away because that was a putty window. Putty brought that up for us. Okay. So now I have two keys here that I can use to connect. I can use my putty key. My putty key requires me to put in a password. But if I just use my regular, my personal um, private key, it's not even going to require me to put in a pass password. So let's see what that looks. Well, I'll tell you what. I've got a slide coming up, and we'll demo that one in just one second. Okay. Oh, the most common problem that people have with PuTTY is they get the no supported authentication errors uh, method error. Okay. And the only reason you would get that is if you didn't follow my instructions. Okay. If you followed my instructions, you're not going to get this. But what this means is you've told it that you want to use a key, but it can't find that key or that key's in the wrong format. Okay. So if you're getting this error, back up, watch the instructions again, follow them again, create a new key, and get it um, done just right. And once you get it done right, you never will have to worry about it again. <clears throat> now, Windows comes with SSH. Um, it's technically SSH.exe, but we can just type in SSH and it will work. Um, let's bring up a command prompt. Let's make that a little bit bigger. And I don't want to be typing over myself, so let's rearrange it just a little bit. There we go. You should be able to see everything about now. Okay, so if I type SSH, it gives me all the commands that are possible, okay, or all the options that are possible. I know that probably looks like a lot of gobbledygook. You really don't have to worry about most of that. Let's go into the .SSH directory. Now, as you can see, I've got a lot of... Um, I've got a lot of keys, and they're all on, they all have like Skippy and Skippy.pub. Skippy.pub is my private key. I can show that to anybody. They can't use it unless they have the, um, oh, Skippy.pub is my public key. Um, I can show it to anybody. They can't use it unless they have my private key. Skippy, without an extension, is my private key. And my default one is IDRSA, and that's just a standard that um, tells SSH that this is an RSA um, 
T. Uh, ignore the dot or ridge. I, I had some problems there. But I've got IDRSA and IDRSA.pub. And IDRSA pub is what I put on all my servers, okay? It is not necessary. It's not even a recommended practice that you create a different key for each server. It's perfectly fine to create you one set of um, public key, private key, and put your public key on all the servers that you're going to want to be connecting to in that same one. And that way, if you invalidate that key or if you stop using that key, nobody else can get, um, get in. So, um... Let's type, you know, I'm lazy, so we're just going to type that, but I want to show you what we typed there. Okay, I, uh, I typed SSH and then dash I. That tells it what identity file to use, and I said my identity file is IDRSA, and since it's in this directory, we're good. Then dash L means user. That's common sense, right? Dash L for user. I don't know why that's what it is, but dash L says this is the username. Dash P is the port, okay? Now, SiteGround runs on non-standard ports for SSH, and they have their reasons for doing that, and they're not the only ones that do it. A lot of people do it. Most of the time, SSH is run off of port 22. That is the reserved port for SSH. But you can run an SSH server on any port. And SiteGround runs theirs on 18.765. And then the final thing is the host name. Now, this would be the domain name of your site normally, okay? My site has a weird domain name because I just set up a temporary site. But this would be how you would connect um, to it. Now, once I have all of that typed in, I can hit enter, and it logs me in. And again, I can cd to www.public. And as you can see, we've got the same thing, okay? We've got um, wpconfig.php. We are connected. So let's type exit there. We're going to leave that for the moment. We're going to go back to the slides and talk about my favorite one, Windows Subsystem for Linux. Long about PHP 7, I believe, maybe 10, um, Microsoft started incorporating parts of Linux into the operating system. Um, we're currently on WSL 2, which, act, which actually has a, a Linux kernel built into Windows, and I can open up a window that gives me a full-blown Linux operating system right there in Windows. And as much as I have been a Windows user for most of my 30 years of uh, programming, ever since uh, I actually owned a copy of Windows 1.0, okay, <clears throat> came on 15 floppy disks. But um, as much as I have loved it, uh, Mac OS for the longest time was a better experience for developers because it was based on Unix. Well, now Windows has this built in and I'm back to being a Windows user and love it because the only thing I use Windows for these days is for the browsers. Everything else runs inside of WSL. So let's see, I've got a WSL here somewhere. Okay, so um, in WSL, I've got, there we go, there's my home directory, okay, and I can do whatever I want, it has SSH built into it, just like um, the Windows, uh, the, the command prompt did, okay, and if I... Now, let's see, I don't want this to automatically hit enter, so let's do this. Now, if I type something, uh, it, notice this looks exactly like what I typed before, okay? Um, I'm giving the complete name and path to my IDRSA because I'm not in the .ssh directory. So I'm saying my identity file is this file, complete path and file name. Uh, my user is the same, the port is the same, and the host name is the same. And if I hit enter... Boom, we're connected. www.calpublic. And you've seen this before, so you know that it's all just the same. Okay? And when I type exit, it comes back out. Okay. So, now we understand how to connect to the server. And I hear you going, hey, Cal, that's great. 
but why would I want to? Why would I want to access the internet like it was 1993? Because back in the day, before Sir Tim Berners-Lee gave us um, the WWW specification and um, Mosaic gave us the very first browser, this is how we connected to services on the internet. And they had some pretty useful ones out there, but they were all command line. They all looked like this, okay? And if you didn't do some, if you didn't work in this type of environment, you didn't get a lot done. So, um, most people say, okay, but why would I want to do that? Well, there are some things that you can do now. Uh, back, I want to say around 2013, uh, several gentlemen started experimenting with a command line tool for Windows called WPCLI. Okay, um, and it, it gives us the power to do things that normally I would have to log into a Windows installation to do. And it's not bad to log into the Windows installation, but on the other hand, if I can do it quicker and I can automate it or I can include it as part of several other commands that I'm doing and create a job that does a bunch of different things, then that's a, a positive. So what all can we do? Well, some of the a few things we can do is I can install and update plugins and themes without having to um, log into WordPress itself. Just from the command line, I can see all my plugins, I can update them, I can install new ones, same thing with themes. I can do user maintenance, and I used to do a lot of this. Um, I just finished a contract with a company and we would use WPSLI to add and subtract users, to elevate users, to demote users when they uh, were no longer needed the uh, elevation. Um, and I could do it all right there from the CLI. I can do content maintenance. I actually wrote an article one time that I installed WordPress, I set up the database, I created a user, I uploaded a picture, and I created a post that used that picture all from the command line, okay? Now, it wasn't a stunning piece of work. It was um, a hello world with a picture, I believe, of a PHP elephant. But, that was, you know, it, I did it all from the command line. I didn't have to log into WordPress once to do it. It was just to show you the power of this tool that we've got. So you can do all of that, but you can also do so much more. Most plugins these days will give you a... Um, most plugins these days will add commands to WPSLI. Yoast is my favorite. Yoast has several maintenance commands that you can use right from WPCLI to do things like update the um, database or rescan the database, um, do a bunch of different things. And like I said, you can do these as part of nightly maintenance. You can have a job that does all of these if you want. Um, and takes care of them. So it's a very powerful tool to, um, to learn how to use. So let's look at a little bit about what we can do. Now, let's go back over here, and I'm going to log back in, okay? Now, I'm not using PuTTY, but if I were using PuTTY, you would use PuTTY, you would select the, uh, the SG demo that we created, and you would click on open, and from that point, it's going to look exactly like this, okay? And then we need to go into um, the public directory, okay? Because WPCLI wants to know where we are. And then if I just type WPCLI version, oops. I, okay, WP is the name of the command. I keep calling it WPCLI, but in the, um, in, the, in the command line, it's just WP for WordPress. So I type WP, and then CLI is the plugin that I want to use, or the command that I want to use, and then version is the subcommand, okay? So if I type WPCLI version, there. It tells me I'm using um, 2.5.0. Let's open that up. Just a little bit, okay. And that is the most com or the most current version. Let's get that, there we go. Okay, and the beauty of SiteGround is SiteGround maintains that for me. When there's a new version, SiteGround will upgrade it, uh, update it. I don't have to maintain that at all. Uh, to give you some idea of what all is possible, here are all the commands and subcommands that you can do. You can do caching, we're gonna do a little bit about that. Um, cron, we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Uh, users and plugins and uh, things like that. There's all kinds of things that you can do. And you got to remember, 
I don't have anything but a couple of uh, plugins installed. And so if you've got a bunch of different plugins installed, you're going to have a much longer list of there because most modern plugins these days that do anything of significance will put this or will um, send you additional um, commands that you can use. Okay. Um, and then, of course, you know, with user comes super admin. So if you are running multi site and you want to make somebody a super, ad, super admin, you've got the command to do that also. So, um, well, let's install a new plugin, okay? So um, I don't think, well, let's take a look. Um, WP plugin list. I don't think Akismet is installed on this because this is a brand new system. <coughs> it comes with the SiteGround cache and SiteGround security and the WordPress starter that um, SiteGround um, ships with all their standard sites. So I don't have Akismet, so let's install Akismet. Now I want to install Akismet, but I also want to activate it. So I say WP plugin install Akismet and activate. Okay. Boom, we're done. Now if I go back up and say WP plugin list, a Kismet's listed, okay? Now, let's say that I've decided that I'm not going to allow users to comment on my blog, which I stopped doing a long time ago because reasons. But um, if I want to get rid of it, I use the uninstall command. I say uninstall a Kismet, but I also want to deactivate it first. So, and it uninstalled it. And now if I go back, we're back to the original three, okay? It's that easy. Um, just to let you know, let's see. Let's install a Kismet again. Let's go here. And you can see I've got a Kismet and it was just installed and it's asking me to set it up. I don't feel like setting it up, so I'm gonna install it. And now if I come back over here and refresh, boom it's gone. So you can see that things that I am doing here on this are affecting my actual site. This is SG or um, calE17.sg-host.com. So it's, you know, you can see that I'm working on the same one on both of them. Um, let's WP user list. And as you can see, there are two users, me and Laura. And that's because I use this site for a lot of um, webinars and a lot of the writing and the articles that I write for SiteGround. And Laura comes in uh, and does um, screenshots and stuff like that. So Laura and I are here and we're both administrators. Now, here's the fun part. I can say, I can do that same thing, but say format equals JSON. And that's going to give me the um, same information, but in JavaScript object notation. And I know you're saying, Cal, why would I want JavaScript object notation? Well, you might not, but your programmers might. And if you learn a little bit of programming, you don't have to be a programming expert, but if you learn a little bit of programming, you can actually manipulate this yourself. Now, I'm going to paste in a little piece of code. Let me tell you what this does. Well, can't go out that far. Okay. Um, actually, let's do that. Format JSON. Okay. This is the pipe command. This, uh, in um, any Linux or Unix environment, this says take whatever comes out of this, which is the, um, the SSH, or the, the w, I'm sorry, WP CLI user list, whatever comes out of that, pipe that into whatever I type here. And this is just a little piece of PHP that um, says to take the JSON and decode it and out export it. So now I've got this in a format that I can use in a program. Okay, it's the same information, it's just formatted differently. I can also, if I want my users in a comma separated value, uh, list. Okay, I can put CSV there and that will give me that and I can take that and import it into Excel. If you've got a bunch of users, this is a great way to get a handle on them, stuff them into um, a um, spreadsheet and get a handle on them. Um, since I don't have a bunch of users, that's not really necessary for me. 
Uh, the the last thing we can do, is, uh, the last thing I will show you here is WP post list. Okay, and as you can see, I've got exactly one post in there. It's my hello world. I just created it. But what if I want my pages? Well, I can say um, post type equals page. And now you can see I have my sample page is there. And I have a privacy policy, which you should have a privacy policy, but it is in um, draft mode, as you can see right here. I've not published my privacy policy yet. Now, WordPress, if you're familiar with post types, you know this. If you're not familiar with what a post type is, everything since WordPress started as a blog, everything eventually is a post. But we have custom post types that allow us to do different things. I've used custom post types for calendar events. I've used custom post types to represent um, other things, to represent episodes of my podcast, all of these. But they all come down to custom post types. And if you know the name of that custom post type, then you can use that to filter the list. If you don't type anything there, it's just going to give you posts. And if I type post type equals post, it's still going to give me my list of posts. So that's one of the things that we can do. Okay, back to the slide. Now let's start to put it all together, okay? Um, we can use WPCLI, but I hate having to log in each and every time I want to do something. So we can, uh, WPCLI has a switch that allows us to say connect to this server and do what I'm about to tell you remotely and that's the um, dash SSH or dash dash SSH switch. So let's take a look at how this works. Now first thing we're going to do is I'm going to make this easy for myself. Um, let's get out of that. I'm going to create a um, config file. Normally this would be in your .ssh directory. Um, in this particular case, mine is in my user directory because I'm working inside of a container. And let's see, .ssh config. Okay. Yep, there we go. Um, and as you can see, I've got a entry here for calE17.sghost. Uh, and it just specifies the host name, the port name, the username, and the identity file, so that anytime I say, oh, that's visual. Anytime I say that, it gives me all of that. So I can say SSH that, boom, it's done. So I, I don't have to enter all of that information each time. I can create it one time and it's done. But where this really comes in handy, and that's just the, um, I, the file, if you're, um, if you're creating one from scratch, don't copy and paste this, but copy this and then change these to fit the information that, S that um, SiteGround gives you right here, okay? So what can we do with this? Well, remember that user list we did? Well, what if we want to do that, but I don't want to connect to the server to do it? I can use this command, okay, WP user, and I've got WP installed locally on my machine, user list, and then SSH. Now, the SSH is in two parts, okay? I say dash dash SSH equals, and then calE17.sg-host.com, which matches, nope, not that one. Which matches my, um, there we go, which matches this, okay? It's got to match that. And then after that, I've got slash, it starts with slash, slash home, slash customers, slash www, my domain name, public HTML, okay? Um, home and customer, if you're working with SiteGround, it always starts with slash home, slash customer. And then it would be slash www and then slash your domain name slash public HTML. That's going to be the format for every one of these if you're hosted with SiteGround. If you're not hosted with SiteGround, you might have to um, play around a little bit to find the exact right combination. But if I want to run the user list rem remotely, meaning I'm not logged into the server anymore, but I am running this command on the server, 
I hit that. And this is going to SSH into my server, run the command, and then give me the results. And notice we got the same thing that we got last time. Okay. Now, user lists are fun, but not entirely um, useful. What if I want to, um, actually, let's just copy this portion because I can type the rest. Uh, WP cron list. I don't know if you know it, but WordPress has its own built-in scheduler. We call it a cron uh, because that's traditionally what schedulers have been called. But WordPress has one built in. And if you want to see what your machine or what your website is going to run on a regular basis, you can use WP cron list. There's also some good plugins you can install if you want to see this in the um, the um, in the on the um, admin side. But normally speaking, you can't see this on the admin side. And then I type I paste in my um, SSH. Now this is going to give me a big list. <laughs> Run. Let's see, what did I do? Oh, how about WP cron event list? There we go. Okay, actually, that's not that bad. Um, I ran this on one of my production sites and it had over 50 different entries. But this is what your site runs. Now, mine are all set to run um, every 12, or some of them are every 12 hours. Uh, which would run them twice a day. Some of them are set for um, one hour. And then I've got one, the site health check, that runs once a week. And these are all the just the default WordPress does these type things. As you can see, the next one's going to run in about 29 minutes. But here's the thing. These events only run if somebody visits a page because when somebody visits a page, WordPress says, oh, hey, I see there are events to be run. Let me start a separate process and go run those events. Well, if nobody's visiting the page, and in this case, nobody is, those events are never going to get run until I happen to be poking around one day and actually run it. So I can do this. Event... Now, I could specify a given event by, by saying this name or this hook, but I want it to run all of them. So I'm going to run that. And I've told it, event run and dash dash all. Now, if I go back and look at my events, notice everything's now down to 11 hours and 59 minutes, all my 12 hour ones. Okay, and these are 23 hours and 59 minutes. So if you've got a site and I've got uh, probably two of the 10 that I manage, not a lot of people go to. I have systems that run these for me every night at about one or two in the morning, just so that I always get the maintenance done. Okay. Um, what about our plugins? Well, it's WP plugin list. Now, what if we want to upgrade our plugins? Well, we can say, um, update and again all and it's going to go through and see now none of my plugins needed updated i keep them all updated and um, running matter of fact on almost all my sites um i keep i use the auto uh, updater to to handle that i think i've only got one production site where i don't do that but that's a, i have my own reasons for not doing that uh, on that particular site and so all my plugins are now um run the final thing I want to show you is the cache. WordPress has built-in caching and SiteGround has additional caching and you can add additional caching layers on top of that if you want. And one of the problems is if you've got all this caching built up and something doesn't go exactly right and you change something and it doesn't change on the screen, you have to invalidate that cache or clear that cache. So we can do that by saying WP cache flush and now our cache has been flushed okay and I did this I didn't have to log in um, and if you are an admin you should have um, two-factor authentication installed on your site so you would have to get out your or find your phone log in use your 2FA to get in just so you can get to um, uh, invalidating your cache and then you got to have a plugin to do it because there's no way in normal WordPress to invalidate the cache. But with this, I've got one command that just says invalidate cache. 
and it, it, it takes care of it for me. So I can either copy and paste this somewhere like in um, Evernote or something like that and paste it back in, or I could make a, a, a command that says um, clear site cache on my local machine, and then anytime I run clear site, cra clear site cache, it runs this command for me, and I can remember clear site cache, okay? I don't have to remember all the details. <clears throat> so, it may not seem like it, but with a little practice, you can do a lot of what you normally have to log into WordPress. You can do it right from the CLI and do it faster. The more you do this, um, the faster that it's going to get. Um, and you can um, do this right from the command line without having to log in and manage anything. Um, it just makes life, for me, it makes life a lot easier. Um, and I hope that some of this has sparked an inspiration to you and um, helped you figure out how to manage your site a little easier. See you next time.